So the Hall of Fame next week, Coach, How? tell me how you feel about it. Tell me, like, all the things bubbling up inside. Coach, it's, it's, they tell you the end of March, and it's a good thing because you need five and a half months to kind of get your uh, head around what this whole thing means. And I still don't have it. I, you know, I really don't have a problem with making a speech of things, but I am struggling mightily with this thing. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, um, it's a great honor. I'm truly humbled. I can't believe that I ever did anything in my life worthy enough to deserve, you know, you're going into the basketball club, uh, the best one on the planet. So it's fun. When you first started out coaching, um, what was your, what was your mindset about coaching and what you wanted to achieve? And then now you look, so so many years later at the impact that you had right so when you first started coaching did you did you have that in mind or what was what was your mentality about coaching i guess the biggest point that i would think back is i wanted to win i wanted to win and the big say the saying that they said to me all the time was teresa Rome wasn't built in a day. Rome wasn't built in a day. It takes time. It takes time. And I used to say, well, why can't it be now? Why can't we do these things now? What, what's holding us up? Like when I took the job at Rutgers as the first full-time women's basketball coach in the country, they gave us two scholarships. Well, why two? I needed three uh, because I had Mary and Patty Coyle, and I had June Olkowski. Well, I couldn't go back and tell one of them I don't have a scholarship for you. So it, it was a constant process to be able to do it. And I think the big thing was we're going to win. And winning takes care of a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. did, you see your, did you see yourself as a pioneer and that you had to push the envelope um, to, to be successful or like – did you did you see that because that that was right around the the time of you know uh, Title IX and mm -hmm. and you were the first full time coach in women's basketball history like that's amazing so yeah did you see yourself as I am a pioneer so I need to <laughs> I hate that word pioneer really pioneer. Okay. I, of course I think of um, wagon trains and covered wagons <laughs> and you know bonnets and going across the planet. <laughs> I'm like, oh, geez. But no, I, when we were doing this, Coquise, we didn't think of any of those things. And I really look back now and I think that you have a window. And in that window, that is your time to do whatever it is that you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And for us, it was building the programs, the scholarships, travel, um, making people aware of women's basketball. I think that once we got the thing rolling, we had good players. The fans at Rutgers, they loved watching those kids play. And, you know, and they interacted so well with the fans. So they, the fans felt that with the allocated dollars that they had in their salaries or whatever, their budgets for entertainment, those kids sufficed and filled that for them, which was great. And they built those relationships. And, it was about those relationships and we went on and like, that was our window. Like, if you look today, like the things you had to deal with when you started as a head coach at Penn state are different than the things I had to deal with. Right. The same right. way today you look at the NB the WNBA, they're dealing with issues of yeah, salaries. They're dealing with um, caps. They're dealing with, um, you know, travel mm -hmm. charter versus there's always something there. There's always an issue or a topic. And the trick is to make that a stepping stone, not a stumbling block. And that's where we are. And here I am 50 years later, that, which I, that's the biggest thing. I, I just cannot believe that it's 50 years. I'm like, where did that time come? That, that bothers me. When you know, people say, oh, it's 50 years. I'm like, whoa. Like, Who are you talking to? It can't be me. But, um, that's the neat part. And it did, it went very, very fast, mm -hmm. very, very fast. And uh, here we are. Yeah. So no, I didn't think about any of those things. I didn't think about the hall of fame. I didn't think about any of those honors I, I, that was not in my, uh, you know, ba my basket. Yeah. So you had a lot of successes here uh, 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 in a, an enormous amount of 
times uh, where you guys were were awesome and amazing on the court. Is there any any one thing that or any one special moment that that sticks out to you from your time here at Rutgers and, and all the successes you had? You know, it's funny. I, I still get together with those kids to get mm -hmm. and, you know, and uh, I learned more things that went on that I didn't know then, which I really wish I didn't know. But <laughs> they had a great time. They were in college. They loved each other. They took care of each other. They wouldn't disappoint each other. And I never, Coquish had to worry about, okay, we got a game. We have a game today. We're going to play a big opponent. But which team will show up? I never had to worry about them showing up to play. They came to play. And when they crossed those lines... You better be ready. I, I told one of the a um, couple years ago they had a retro game with the old uniforms. Okay. And I spoke to the team and I said, I want to tell you what, uh, you know, I think it's great. I think you're all wonderful. But if you put those uniforms on, you better make damn well straight that you're ready to play because the people who wore them before you are going to have something to say if you don't. And right. they did. They held each other accountable. They had their own kangaroo court. I mean, I had one kid, Jenny Hall. Came into my office one day, all upset, crying. I said, well, Jenny, what's the matter? She said, Chris Daly put me in um, timeout. That was a big <laughs> And I said, okay. Now, Chris was, Chris was studying, uh, as they all were, to be uh, teachers and whatnot. Timeout was the big thing back then. They, I'm, I'm, I'm really dating this whole thing. But Chris ran timeout. If you didn't do what she wanted, then you went to timeout. I didn't have any say. So I said to Jenny, what did you do to provoke this action? She told me, I said, do you think you deserve it? She said, no, but I don't want to be in timeout. I said, well, Jenny, I'm going to tell you what, I can't get you out of timeout. You are in timeout and you're going to have to deal with Chris Daly because <laughs> I'm out of this. And I didn't, I didn't get into it, but they did. They ran it. They, yeah. you did not disappoint them. You did not disappoint each other. If you stepped out of line, they told you. And I mm -hmm. think that's what's missing today we tolerate everything. It's like, oh, okay, you didn't make that pass, or not a problem, or you didn't make that cut, or you didn't come hard enough to practice. Mm -hmm. That would never have stood back then. They they were going to line you up, and you know, if you stepped out of line, you were in timeout. And I think even that is, I cut that is hilarious. A couple of times. <laughs> you 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 got put in timeout. <laughs> I think they put me in timeout a couple of times. <laughs> I was like, I don't care. You can put me anywhere you want, but, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> but that they, is... uh, they they went on. They were all so successful, and they had a great time. But mm -hmm. they uh, there's not one thing that I can point to. I think the best treat that I get is when I see them, and they're all together. And I just like sitting and observing and listening to them because they never really talk about the games, as you well know. They all they talk yeah. about all the goofy stuff that they used to do and on the bus and yeah. whatever else they did. But they had, they had a great time. They loved Rutgers. Rutgers loved them. And that's what's neat. Starting that 1982 season, did you know that you had a championship team at the beginning of the year or did that team kind of develop into that? Like what was no, that? I knew it. Like? I knew yeah. it. We played, we played an exhibition game against the Republic of China. And uh, they had a, a woman on their team who's now deceased who could stand in the, the doorway and block all the light coming through. That's how big she was, <laughs> about seven foot. And we played them. We lost. But I came into the training room afterwards and I said, I want to tell you what, this team's going to make it. This team, this team has it. They just had it, even though we had lost. But I knew that this team was, this team was good. And they could play. And they had their own kangaroo. And that, I'm thinking back about a couple of things. They, yeah, they had their own kangaroo court. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And so over the course of that year, you just watched them develop into that championship team and, and elevate that. So when, when you guys actually won it, what was that like? And how did that compare to um, your championships at Immaculata? You know, because you have that that experience that not many people have of winning one as a winning a championship as a player. And then also winning one as a coach. So what's what's that ex experience like? You know, it's funny. We were in the, the semifinal game at the Palestra. And Patty Coyle was supposed to pass the ball 
it was into we we're playing i think villanova and she was supposed to pass the ball inside to i can remember this clear as day into june and she did not make that particular pass and i for whatever reason i don't know why but it was halftime coquise and the team was coming off the floor towards the locker room and i was going straight for patty i mean they're coming this way and i went straight for her and i was in that child's face and and she basically wanted to tell me to take a chill but thought better of it (laughs) and then came back uh you know that's where that ball goes you need to make that pass do you realize and she was she was good with me but i was all over the next day she came back and she was um 11 for 12 from the free throw line her twin sister mary yelled at her for missing the free throw and she was had 30 points in that game she was the mvp so my point is, you could get in their faces then, and they would come back and respond. I don't know that your job right now, you can do that. I mean, you're going to have to have that special group where you can, at that time, in whatever good way it is, be able to bring them, take them beyond where they can't get by themselves. And I, you only get that one shot at it. And mm-hmm. I didn't want them to miss it. I wanted them to have what I had. And um, it, I, I can remember that clear as day. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. She missed. Oh. Patty missed the free throw, and Mary was all over because she missed the free throw. Patty was getting yelled at at everybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh Poor man! Patty. So, so, Coach, you have like an all-star roster um, introducing you into the Hall of Fame and present your enshrinement with, you know, Kathy Rush. Mm-hmm. And Charles Barkley and Coach Stringer, um, what does that mean to you to have those three present you? Well, the thing is, they they're all Philadelphia. It's a Philadelphia connection. Kathy, obviously, being um, our coach and took and directed for three years. But the other piece is, it's the 50th anniversary of Title IX. So I also wanted to put that together, and it came out this way: is that Kathy. Um, they all were proponents of advancement and uh, opportunities for women. Kathy coached us, and then she had her summer camps, and mm. how many women got their start at her camps. Then. Right. Vivian was a major driving force with opportunities for women, um, uh, particularly um, anybody who really she felt needed to be in that. She was, she was for them, she, and she was driving that force. And Charles, I've known him for quite a while. We went on the Nike trips together, and, you know, that was when his golf swing was good. But <laughs> what I love about Charles is his honesty, but the thing that really resonated with me was his TV commercial, the one he did with the young girl and the boys on the playground. Now, I grew up on that playground, but in that commercial, the young girl is selecting the teams. Mm-hmm. That is a big improvement. That's, 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 so I tied them all together for title nine and opportunities for girls and women. That's, a, that, that's awesome that, that you put all that together. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I tried to put that with the theme of, um, uh, of um, the title nine. It's the 50th year and it's 50 years of we, when we won our first chance. It's just, everything's kind of, it's in God's time. This is it. And it's all fitting together. And I wanted that message to be about the future of young people, young girls, and taking that opportunity. Because when I got started, there was a picture in the newspaper of a a girl by the name of Helen Manchin. She went to Notre Dame Moyland in uh, Philadelphia, in the Catholic League. And she was, all these pictures, all all these trophies that she had won as a player. And that was really rare. My mother cut it out, gave it to me. And I kept it. I still have it. And she wore number 12. And that's the reason I wore number 12 all those years was because of Helen Manchin. And when you see a young girl in a commercial and you see her choosing the teams and she chooses Charles, who's a pro and everybody knows, it, you, you don't know what the effects of that will be on that person's inner confidence to say, I can do that. I can be that girl there. So that was really kind of neat. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Where do you see women's basketball going 
you know, in the future or, or better yet, where would you like to see it go? What, what would you like to see the game? How would you like to see the game evolve? Um, moving yeah. Carl and I went up to, um, we had an affair with the um, Hall of Fame and we watched the uh, Connecticut Suns and the New York Liberty. And I've always loved the Liberty. I've been partial to that group always. I watched them play. And I have to tell you, I loved watching the Liberty play. I loved the way they moved the ball. I loved their interaction. I thought, you know, people should really watch this team. They should, you know, if you don't want to come to all the games, fine, but you should make it on your bucket list. Go to one game. Go watch them play. And what I'd like to see, if, if I had my magic wand and my crystal ball, I'd love to see it where that league, because every time I would read something about it, it would be, this one was in a drama cat fight. This one was in something else, whatever. You know, can we just put that aside and can we get to the fact of who made what move and who did this? And just let's just talk about the skill of the game and let's leave all that other nonsense to the side somewhere. And that's that's one thing I'd like to see improved in the game because I think it is a good product. I think that they can really do some some um I loved I loved watching the Liberty play and I thought and I I watched them after that quite a while. You know, look up the game where and just sit down and just enjoy good bet. I loved how quickly they moved. I loved how the interaction um I loved how you know they worked with their their big people. It, it was just it was just good basketball. I, I enjoyed it. Yeah, I, I love that that uh, focus that you have. Like, let's just let's just talk about the game, right? right? And not all the the other the other stuff that seems to come with women's basketball, but women's sports in general. It's almost like you can't just talk about the, their their skill. You have to add something else in when it's right. Game. And, and it really it. was a lot. And I thought. You know, we don't need this. It, who cares if somebody's mad at somebody on the bench or something? Who, but yeah. they just the, the media seemed to focus on that far more than um, a fan. And again, they're driving that. What is it that we're selling? I, and I'll go back when we were when I was coaching. I'd get ready. I had an hour before I knew when I wanted to be in the gym, and then I would back it up. So that's how I prepared. And that was game day. That's just the way that went. And when I was getting ready, I would be in my mind thinking about, okay, now there I have to deal with the media because we had five or six reporters who followed us at Rutgers. And I would say, what are the things that I want to get across? I don't want to just answer their questions. I mean, God forbid I should answer their questions, but <laughs> I wanted, there were things that I wanted to get out and they were my, they were my vehicle. So I needed to prep them without them knowing that I was prepped. But these are the things. They'd ask me a question, and I would say these things. And they would then promote that, and i make sure always that it was a good interview because they needed that. Always make sure that it wasn't a word, uh, one-word answer. Whether I won or lost, make sure that I was there to do that. And mm -hmm. I think that that was the coverage that we received, and – that's where I think the fans read that and they took that as gospel and that perpetuated. I just think it's important that as we go forward with the sport, because they are talented. I mean, those women, they yeah. are flat out talented. And um, I would just like to see them honored for what they can do with their skills. Well, it's an honor for me to talk to you and uh, at this at this stage, this moment for you. I'm so happy for you. Um, you you've impacted so many people beyond the the that women. That worries me. Coach. I always worry about that. How I impacted people. <laughs> it's a good thing. Um, oh, I hope my, so. Me personally, I just I just remember, like I said earlier, all the little nuggets, the coaching wisdom that you gave me and then coming here just to see up close and personal, all the success you had, it's so inspiring. Um, it's so inspiring to carry on what you went, what you did and what Coach Stringer did. But, but more importantly, I'm just happy that um, you get this honor to go into, into that special club because it's so well-deserved. It's so well-deserved. Well, thank you. So thank you. I'll be rooting for you. Well, I'll be rooting for you guys. I'll be, thank you, you know, coming to the games and, uh, Checking them out and do your thing. 
Thank you, Coach. Congratulations again. Thank you, Coach. And, uh, Thank you. Enjoy it. Enjoy the moment. All right. Take Go care. are you. Thank you. Go are you. <laughs>